Let's go back to Kingdom of God 101. After all, I do call my organization Kingdom Fire Ministries. And in Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, it reads this way, And Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Is there somebody over here who has a problem when your cervical disc that's, that's giving you difficulty over in this part of the room? Is that you back there? Would you like to get healed right now and not wait till the end of the message? Okay. Alberto or one of you that are traveling? Yeah, okay. Let's just put our hands up toward her. Did you have an accident? Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hands toward our sister and we just release the power of the kingdom of God upon her. We speak now to that herniated disc, and we break the power of pain, and we command everything come into alignment. Let the kingdom of God come in Jesus' name right now. Receive it in Jesus' name. All the pain drain out of the body and neck align. That crook in the neck, we command you to come straight. Bones receive the kingdom. Now, break in. There it is. Take more. Take more. Let the power move through you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Keep praying as long as you need to, Alberto. All right, so Jesus said he gave them, or it says that Jesus gave them a, uh, power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. That's Luke 9, 1 and 2. Now, that passage makes it clear that the purpose in sending out the 12 was to proclaim the kingdom of God. That's what he told them to do. Go proclaim the kingdom of God. That, by the way, is also why when I was praying for her, I said, let the kingdom come upon you. I was invoking kingdom because Jesus commanded us to invoke kingdom. It's not a magic formula. It's a declaration of truth. But when we say it, he backs it. That's the way it works. Okay, so they were told to proclaim the kingdom of God but do we also see that identical with that, right alongside of it, in complete alignment with it, they were supposed to heal as well. And they were to announce this invasion of God's power breaking in upon disease, sickness, whatever. And so the Gospels show us that the proper proclamation of the kingdom and the healing ministry are linked. They're inseparable, in fact. Sometimes people try to separate them, but I think the effectiveness goes down. Because healing actually proves the veracity of what we're preaching. So we can't preach the kingdom properly without healing. And when we heal, we should declare the kingdom of God. Jesus was a word worker. He linked proclamation with demonstration. And what he did, he taught. And what he taught, he did. And not only that, he told his disciples to do the same thing. This is at the foundation of kingdom theology. There's a lot more we could say about the kingdom of God. But for purposes of what we're doing tonight, that's, that's enough. But there's this uncomfortable truth, or maybe an inconvenient one, that is often overlooked by many people. Right in the middle of Luke 9.1, Luke says something that gives people pause. He says he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Now, in this church, that may not be controversial, but I can tell you in much of the modern church in America today, it's quite controversial. If people believe in demons, it's in a theoretical sense. And if they believe in them, they're what I call New York Times demons. Now, New York Times demons aren't biblical demons. Biblical demons, are they have will, they have intellect, they have malice, they have power. They create bad effects in people's lives, and they are real, and they can be driven out in the name of Jesus. New York Times demons, on the other hand, are... Well, if he just had a little more counseling in Prozac, he could have dealt with his demons and he wouldn't have committed suicide. But, you know, it's such a shame that that's just the way it goes. So we are not talking about New York Times demons here. We are talking about biblical demons. Unfortunately, in a lot of the modern theology books, biblical demons have been transmogrified into New York Times demons. And as a result, many Christians don't really know what we mean when we say demons. So I'm trying to be really clear about what I mean when I say this. So it says that Jesus gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Now, how many demons does that leave out? None. All demons. That doesn't mean they won't fight and argue, and sometimes they're entrenched, but we've been given power and authority over all of them. And with that, we are to cure diseases which suggests that there is a linkage much of the time between demons and healing. 
or de elimination of demons and healing, if we're going to be a little more precise. So it's a positive thing that he did this, and it's an amazing thing to be given something that has an unlimited scope, all demons, no carve-outs. That's an amazing thing. But Matthew, who reports the same event that we just read about in Luke, Luke 9, he reports on the same event in chapter 10 of his gospel. And in Matthew's account, it says, he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and affliction. So Matthew is even more tightly linking deliverance to healing. And when, whereas Luke says all demons, Matthew says every disease. Now that's, that's an insight. Because what it's telling you is that some of these healings that don't work, some of them that are healings gone wrong, if you want to use that language, some of them are because there's a demonic something that hasn't been addressed. It's been overlooked. Or it hasn't been eliminated. And therefore, people continue to suffer. And that's why it says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, driving out demons and healing the sick. He wasn't just dealing with the mentally ill. He was. But he was also driving out demons in order that the sick would be healed. What are some examples of that? You might remember Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus comes out of the synagogue in Capernaum, and he comes and he rebukes a fever. You don't rebuke things. That, that word rebuke, it's, it's a word that is always associated with demons in the New Testament. So he tells us, Matthew does, that Jesus was driving out demons as part of his healing ministry. And as an example of it, when he healed Peter's mother-in-law of her fever, he rebuked a spirit. He drove out a spirit that was causing that fever to occur. Does that make sense? You know, one time, this is off script, but it's an interesting story. One time I went to Indonesia, and I was meeting a team there. I came in a day late after they had. And when I got there, the entire team was sicker than sick. I mean, they were green. They're kind of doubled over, and we're meeting in this hall. And I walked in, I said, what's going on? Everyone's sick. And I'm like, this doesn't look good. And I'm thinking, there's got to be more going on here than just everyone arrived and you know, drank some bad water or something. And so I'd only been there a couple of hours, and I started getting sick. Now, what does a Westerner say? Well, they were contagious, and you got around them, and they breathed on you, right? Come on, hands in the air. OK. And I'm thinking, this can't possibly be right. And I'm getting sicker and sicker, and it's getting time for me to preach. And I'm going, how am I going to do this? And all of a sudden, I, it just dawned on me. Jesus rebuked the fever in Peter's mother-in-law. I thought, doggone it, I'm being attacked by a spirit here in Indonesia. So I grabbed one of the teammates, and I said, hey, I want you to pray over me. I've got a spirit that's making me sick like all the rest of you. And he comes over, and he's all, Jesus, I pray that you would heal Ken. I'm like, no, no, tell that stupid thing to go. Tell it to get. And he's like, Lord, I pray you would deliver. I'm like, stop, just stop. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm feeling really bad, and I got to preach, and the whole team is sick. So I just start rebuking it myself. And I'm like, okay, you in there, get out of me in the name of Jesus. And now my friend kind of kicks into gear and he goes, yeah, yeah, what he said, what he said. <laughs> and all of a sudden I just feel this <laughs> hit the floor. <laughs> Boom, the fever left and I was fine. It's one of the very few times I've been attacked by a spirit, but on that one I was. And then, now I'm, now I'm just mad dog ugly, right? I'm like, <laughs> me and Clint Eastwood. So I, I took the whole team. I said, all of you, just line up right here. I said, every demon in you that's causing you to be sick, come out. And the whole team, <laughs> they hit the floor. <laughs> They're vomiting and coughing. And when they all got up, every single one of them was healed. I didn't tell that story to ISDM. But anyway. I tell you this to emphasize the point that some healings gone wrong have a demonic root, and we got to get a lot better at diagnosing them and a lot better at kicking them out. 